Warning, warning, warning. If you install this package and load the game immediately without listening all the way through this video, your ship could fly out of control and smash and blow up. So you may want to listen to the new features before you launch the game. That's your warning. Greetings, this is Commander Gangrene TVP, and if you're finding yourself here right now, woo, you're on the installation video for 2.0 for the SciTech X52 Elite setup. So, what do we got going on here today? First, we're going to show you how to get this file and have everything put in place so you'll be ready to rock and roll out of the box. Without any further ado, here we go. So the first thing you're going to do is pop open your browser. And um, basically, there will be a link provided in the video, but since I don't really have the link in the video to click on, I'm just going to go ahead and grab the link over here, give it a good old copy, and just paste it right here into my browser. Bang, I'm on the file dropper site. If anybody who's already installed the 1.0, this should look pretty familiar. I'm just going to go ahead and download the file. It's asking for a little passwordy thing here. A little CAPTCHA, if you will. Let's go ahead and download it, and it's still going there. There we go. Pop it open. There's the zip file. Alright, so if we're looking at the zip file, if we go ahead and open it up, like I said in the other earlier videos, um, we're going to have all three files here. These are all three files that we need to get this thing up and running. So the first file that we have here is the Elite Pro V2.PR0. The PRZ file contains all the commands for the joystick. That way it can um, properly relate to the game and with HSC voice packs. Um, and we'll show you what to do with that. Then we have the PDF file. I'll just go ahead and briefly open this up again. Um, this look, should look really familiar to the people who used 1.0 and might have downloaded this or printed it off. Um, it's just basically updated with, with uh, all the new commands and, and what's going on there. So um, I'll let you guys look over that as much as you want uh, since you'll have the file yourself. So you can use that or not. And then you have the dot binds file. So this is going to be the file that we drop into Elite Dangerous itself, which basically correlates with all the commands from the joystick and HCS. So without further ado, let's get busy. So I like to go ahead and uh, let's grab this other. Here we go. So we got this going on. Put this on the right side of the screen. And we'll go ahead and put that on the left side of the screen. So now we're working on a 50-50 screen. I just think it's a little bit easier. Um, so you'll go to your C drive. Click C drive. Um, and let's put in the keyboard program first. So we're going to, in this case, you're going to go to users. You're going to select your account that you used to log in. I have a family, so we all log in with the same account. We have the family account. We go in there. And in this particular case, we're going to go to, excuse me, for the first file, what we're going to do is we're going to go to public. Then we're going to go to public documents. Then we're going to go to smart technology profile. And what you're going to do is you're going to right click and copy your Elite Pro V2.PRO, you're going to right click in here and you're going to hit paste. Now, I've already got this file in here, obviously, because I built this and it's all right. So, there we're just paste in. I'm going to go ahead and skip the step because I've already got the file listed in there. Perfect. Okay, so then where's the second file? We'll go back up to that uh, users level in here. So, we go back to users. This time we select family and we're going to go ahead and go into app data now remember app data is a hidden a hidden file so if you need to uh, show hidden files you may need to do that you're going to go into app data local frontier developments without the underscore elite dangerous options bindings you can see it right up in there uh, in case you missed any of that stuff so then what we're going to do is you're going to copy your 1.8 binds and if you don't want to lose your previous setup you can see what I did here with mine you could actually take your current one you could rename it 
you just put like an X or a Z in front of it just make it different you know so it's got a different name and then if you go ahead and you copy then you can go ahead and just paste that thing right over and then if you want to if you ever want to go back you could you know change this to you know put a J in front of it for joystick and then take that X or Z back out and your old setup is going to be just the way it was but I'm just going to go ahead and since I don't want to confuse anybody you're just going to go ahead and drop that file in there and I'm just going to rename it and put it back the way it was so this is just like if you were wanting to put it go back to the old one boom so now it's got the old correct name and we're ready to go so those are the three files that we had and we've put in the file for the joystick and we've put in the file for the game okay so once you have that binds file loaded in and you have the new PRO file loaded on the computer you are going to probably want to touch the program itself just to go ahead and get it set up there in your joystick alright so what we can do down here is we can just bounce up our little menu right click on the joystick and go ahead and go to our profile editor go ahead and click OK click programming if you're on uh, this view over here when you first start, which I think is like the default view, you just click views and psh, now you're in the programming view over here. I think the much better view. Um, what you can actually do is I'm going to switch it back to, uh, let's say we're on the old version, version 1. You can see some of these buttons down here change, like uh, wing 2 is alt num 8. Uh, we'll just go ahead and load up v2 now. So we'll load up the new configuration. Bingo, you can see that, that wing button changed right there. If um, now what I can do is I can hit the blue crosshair right here, and that's going to load that right to my joystick. Now, if I'm using the joystick primarily for Elite Dangerous and I want it to load in this mode every single time I plug my joystick in, what we're going to do is we're just going to hit the drop down, we're going to hit the arrow there, going to right click on the joystick. We can see we got it set right now to the V1, the old version. We're just going to go ahead and uh, clear that startup. Now, if we click in there again, right click and I go to V2, I'm just going to go ahead and load into that do it once more, right click I'm going to right click the Elite Pro V2, I'm just going to go ahead and hit set as startup profile bingo bango boingo, so when I plug in the joystick Elite Pro V2 is going to be the program that loads in by default into the joysticks and when you load up it'll show on your screen down there they'll say uh, on the bottom Elite Pro V2 and you'll know you're currently on the, the Elite version and you'll be able to see your landing mode you can see the mode button 1, 2, 3 up top but you can also see the name of the mode so if you have it on red you'll see that it's in flight mode flip it to blue you're on landing mode flip it to or <laughs> flip it to magenta, you're on landing mode, flip it to blue, you're on driving mode and all the commands are programmed in there so um, that's it for that, for getting that joystick set up. We're pretty much ready to rock and roll, but I'm going to go ahead and go over some details. And there are some, this is important, there are some differences in in the joystick setup that you need to be aware of before you launch the game. So I'll just put it in there and just launch it. You're going to want to watch this the next little bit. Okay? Alright, thanks. So one of the very key differences is now we have all nine axes controlled under the joystick. And if you want to turn some of them off, you can. I'm going to talk about um, the direction I was going with it, some of the issues I ran into it, and how I have it currently configured because of those issues. Um, so if we go out and I just go ahead right click on there and I bring up the control panel. Um, you're going to see we have the Y rotation. Now the Y rotation function is the little dial that is around the E button and we're also going to have the X function rotation which is the little dial around the clutch. Now these are now both utilized so if you have these turned down and you go in the game and you <laughs> and you're to launch up 
your ship's going to start flying out of control. You need to have these centered. And there is a little uh, detent in there when you hit the middle. So bang. So I got those. I got both of those sitting there right in that middle position, okay? And they are kind of jittery on mine, but it is what it is. I've got a little tiny dead zone already programmed into the binds file, so it's got a little bit of jitter in there. You should be fine. It should just be falling right into those dead zones, that little tiny dead zone that I've created in there. But anyway, you're going to want to get both of those centered. So what's going on here? The X rotation, this E button, is actually control or tied to your lateral thrust, your side-to-side -side thrust. So not only do you have your your because this used to be thrust left, thrust right, thrust up, thrust down. If you're looking down here at the hat switch on the throttle, thrust up, thrust down, thrust left, thrust right. Well, one of the biggest problems, or one of the big problems I run into is when you hit one of those heavy G worlds and you want to set down on it, even when you're really close to the surface and you press downward thrust, you just give it a tiny tap and it applies 100% thrust directly downward. That gravity grabs you and just slams you in that planet. Even if you're just a couple meters off the surface, it's boom, it's punishing. So I was like, man, there's got to be a better way. So what I've actually done is tied the Y rotation to the up and down thrust. So if you want to go 1% or like 1% or 2% or 5% down or 10% or 25% or 50% down or 75% down or 100% down, you have complete control over it. So you can you have minute ability to control how fast you're going to go up or how fast you're going to go down. So even on those heavy G worlds, you can just give it just a tiny touch downward thrust and you'll just gently lower down to the planet. Way better than hitting 100% thrust down, just boom, bouncing off of it. So I added those in there. So now we are utilizing every single um, rotation on here. So we got the two for the mouse down here, right, left and right down there, up and down. We have the... Um, joystick obviously with the pitch and pitch pitch roll we have our yaw we have our thrust and we have these as well now um, a note on the thrust the thrust also works with Astra so um, you can if you just pull your thrust all the way back and you give Astra commands on how fast you want the ship to go, Astra will follow your commands and she will override the zero thrust and set it up. And so you can you can say all your, your different thrust commands, which I'm not in the game yet, so I'm not going to give any commands out, but all those different commands are going to override where stick is. At any time you want to take manual control of it, boom, you start thrusting up and it's going to read it's going to read directly from your joystick. But if you don't want to deal with that, you just pull it all the way back to zero, give your commands, and you could just sit back and relax and let Astra take you in with just giving commands that way. So, but if you have just if you have your uh, Y rotation, for example, turned down and your X rotation, for example, come down, as soon as you load game to stay on a planet or something, you're going to find yourself flying to the right and flying straight down as fast as you can, or flying to the left and flying straight down as, as fast as, it, as fast your ship can go. So, yeah, make sure you have these guys set in the neutral position before you start your game. Um, if, you're, if you're not, if you didn't watch this part of the video and you loaded this and you get in your game, somebody could be in for a rude awakening. But that's just the way it is. Now, why did I do that? I'm gonna I'll go ahead and and launch up the game and um, and and show you what's going on there because I had a better uh, implementation, but uh, there's a bug right now that's uh, that's in our way of of doing a better impl implementation. There will be eventually a 2.5 version when they fix that problem, or maybe I'll call it 2.1 or whatever. So you know, subscribe to the videos, hit that bell, and when those new versions come out, when they fix that bug, you will get um, the later versions of it. So that's one of the huge things, the, the thruster access control, huge, wait till you see it in action, it's glorious. Um, and uh, we got the voice attack uh, features, and uh, all the fighter commands are now also in the flight and stick as well. We'll definitely be going over all that in the tutorial videos, I'm sure I'll have a fighter tutorial video, we'll go over all the fighter commands for you. Okay, And then you'll have, um, I added in push to talk and talk mute functionality which can work with your in-game chat 
um, you know, using an in-game microphone, or it could work with your external program. So you could be using something like TeamSpeak or have or whatever. And I'll show you how to how you can use it in its default. How we can uh, change that up so that will have its own little tutorial too, and how and how to set up the push to talk, and maybe if you want to change the push to talk button, kind of how to manipulate that a little bit to get it set up the exactly the way you like it. Because I know people like to customize and tailor joysticks a little bit. So it, you know, I've now programmed this thing really slick, so it's really easy to make these kinds of changes. I'm going to show you how to make those changes if you guys want to customize it just a little bit here and there. Easy as pie. Let's go in game and check this out. So let's go into the controls here. Um, one of the things that I wanted to utilize in this configuration was the alternate flight controls. We have the flight rotation here. Let's go ahead and expose that. So you can see you got your, you know, your yaw, your pitch, and your roll, all that stuff here. You can switch it to inverted. You can switch it to regular. You have all these capabilities here. Look at all the stuff we can do. Same thing with your flight thrusts. Now as you can see, I've got the lateral thrust and the vertical thrusters tied to those dials on the joystick. I didn't want to do it that way. I didn't want to have those tied in there. Most of the time in combat, we're not going to be dealing with the dials. We're going to be using the, the hat switch on the front of the throttle. That made perfect sense to me. I didn't want to have to deal with these dials. And, and really, just like um, when you're using Astro to do the voice commands, you the, the hat switch will override what's going on with these um, little thruster things. But you saw a jitter in there, and I'm worried that sometimes I'll pick that up and, and you know, it might get just a little bit up or downward movement or left or right or something like that. That's why I created little dead zones. And I put the dead zones in. I put a little twitch of a dead zone in there, as you can see. And I put a little twitch of a dead zone in there to kind of take away that capability. But, um, uh, they are in there in the default controls. If you want to go ahead and, and remove those, so maybe we want to remove those. You can just go ahead and click on it, hit escape, and bingo, bingo, boingo, you can remove that one. Same thing with there. You can go ahead, click it, click on escape. Of course, I'm just going to go ahead and take the setting. I'm going to go ahead and uh, turn that one back on. Um, so I got them in there. But what was I planning on doing originally is there's the alternate flight controls here. The alternate flight controls, I was like, brilliant. There's a toggle button, so we can toggle into an alternate flyout system. So what I was going to have you do is toggle into the alternate flight controls in which the lateral and vertical thrusts were tied to the, to the rotors, but they weren't tied in all the time. Now, here's the problem. When I went in and I set up all the joystick, I had not been able to figure out a way around it. All of these were inverted. So left was right and right was left, forward was backward and backward was forward, and it was impossible to fly this thing. Even knowing what it was like, trying to fight your intuitive movements on how you move that joystick, it was a nightmare to try to fly this thing. So these alternate flight controls cannot be utilized as the way that I've left the functionality in there, and you can try it. And you go down to a planet, you go ahead and switch those alternate flight controls, and you try using it. Um, and that's what I really want to do, just have these two in the alternate flight controls usually most of the time they wouldn't be on but um, unfortunately that's not going to be a, a current possibility because those because of the reversing and you'll notice with the pitch and raw <laughs> with the pitch and roll there is no inversion here there's no way for me to flip those around I can create dead zones but there's no inversion so what I did is I put in the ticket with um, support for Frontier and they are aware of it um, hopefully at some point they will fix that when they fix that I will go ahead and create just this within the alternate flight controls I will create a new binds file and I will remove wrong one in the thrust I will remove these um, two axes from controlling those thrusters until you activate alternate flight mode so an alternate flight mode is specifically just a mode in which those dials now all of a sudden work to control your side to side motion up and down motion you can use it for landing for uh, you know docking you could use it for planetary landing stuff like that i'm telling you right now i already found it extremely useful and i'm going to show you a clip here in a little bit and you're going to see how cool it is so it's really neat so what are some of the great new features that we have with the 2.0 setup? 
first of all I want to talk about we have nine axes of controls going on here now so not only do we have all the regular controls we had before but now we have lateral thrusters and vertical thrusters and I'm gonna go ahead and demonstrate how useful these vertical thrusters can be we're about 1.73 kilometers up from the surface so let's go ahead and uh, let's press the downward thrust button that we always had before so you know we can go full thrust now this planet's only 0.14 G as you can see there however if this is a 3 G planet that's problematic and see how, how long it takes me to slow down if this is a 3 G planet I could have already smacked into the ground and been done now let's go ahead and uh, lower our landing gear and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how we have new fine-tuned controls. So instead of just slamming down at full Landing speed, let's say maybe we want to go down at about, let's say, 10. Look, now we're going down at about 10. You know, it's uh, kind of hard dialed in right the exact number, but you get about 9, 10, 11. Depends on how you're doing it. Let's say, oh, maybe that's, uh, well, let's speed, up, let's speed up a little bit. Let's go down, let's go down 20, 30. Until we get down to about 300 or 200, then we'll back it off. See, so we're getting now close to the ground. Let's go ahead and back it back off to 10. That's fine. There we go. Going down at 10. And now you're saying, oh, that's still kind of fast. But we have very fine tuned control over how fast we're approaching the surface. So we're about 160, 150, 140. Now you can see we're getting to the point where we can line it up. Let's go ahead and slow it down. So now we'll maybe approach the surface at about, let's say, one or two. There we go, so now we're going down at two. So you don't come down much slower than that. And this is a huge benefit over what we were talking about before, where you just you get, even when you get down real low, you just tap that downward thrust button, you would just slam in the ground so hard. It was pretty unforgiving. But you can see how much benefit that can actually really provide you. Um, so, huge advantage. I'll show you the lateral thrusters here in a minute. But um, what else? What are the other new features that we have within 2.0? Well, we have HCS voice packs. What is your name? I am Astra. Hey Astra, how's it going? So, I've had a chance to play around with the voice packs um, to a degree uh, here or there. I'm not a real pro at it yet, but um, I've gotten the hang of it. And I think that some of these macros can be highly beneficial. So, for example, let's say... De hands free. Deploy SRV. Deploy. It doesn't get much simpler than that in terms of uh, like getting yourself ready. Put it in driving mode here. Let's drive around here for a second. Low gravity warning. So this is a low gravity world. Now one of the main differences I want to point out is the handbrake is now hold down as opposed to toggle because HCS has very specifically programmed hold commands in there so if you put it to toggle and you try to use the HCS voice pack for the handbrake it's not gonna work right you're gonna wanna put it on push it's just having to do with the way they program it just trust me so if I'm driving around I'm gonna stop I just push that handbrake down and hold it down, let it go. There you go. You can also have Astra do it. Handbrake. Oh, so what's the command for Astra? I can't remember. I think it's uh, it's a apply handbrake maybe. Apply handbrake. Engaged. There you go. Release handbrake. Disengaging. So you can see the only way to make that work with Astra is to um, have it be on the push. But all the other buttons are, you know, are the same. Let's go back in the ship. We're done around here. Just the integrity 
Nice. Park right in a rock. Great job. Bring me aboard. Okay. Executing now. Stand by. Securing the ship. So, you know, some of those commands are really nice. You have the same kind of things for, um, that's just finishing up the program right there. It's just uh, setting things up for itself. That's all. It's part of the macro. So, you know, you also have things for, uh, you know, docking your ship, um, you know, the station, canceling dock, things like that. It's a really nice macro, so I think that I might have to actually build some additional macros. Now, I do have a programmable keyboard. I can program those same kind of macros on my keyboard, but who wants to reach for it? And it is nice to be able to just use your voice to call out a command which uh, activates a macro. So, pretty freaking handy. Um, but, H but the HTS voice packs now work perfectly with the controls. You see, there's no kind of conflicts going on, and, they, and when I put out those commands, they're working exactly as they were designed. Now, with the HTS voice packs, you could be saying, you know, yeah, you got a hot toss, and every single button for your chip is, you know, right there, and you can just click it and press it. But yeah, I think the real benefit is with those macros, or if you just want to use some commands, you can also use the commands. And you have the side benefits that they do have the trade run, the explore, the like Horsehead Nebula exploration uh, tour, um, things like that. You can also ask Astra questions, and she'll be able to answer questions. So, like, for example, Astra, what is the constellation Leo? One of the 48 constellations described by the 2nd century astronomer Ptolemy. Leo remains one of the 88 modern constellations today, and one of the most easily recognizable due to its many bright stars and a distinctive shape that is reminiscent of the crouching lion it depicts. The lion's mane and shoulders also form an asterism known as the sickle, which to modern observers may resemble a question mark backwards. There you have it. So, I mean, it's got some nice features onto it, and it just works with the with the configuration now. So it's just a bonus. If you have it, if you got it, flaunt it. Whatever. So let's go ahead and look at some of the throttle um, stuff that we can do with Astra here. So let's just go ahead and um, I could give a launch command, but I'm just going to launch it up myself manually. Now I, I did use. I did use the up button there, but as you see, I, I'm now switching to the lateral thrusters. I can control it, go up just a little bit. I can leave it right there in the middle. We can go up real fast. You can see our speed there. Just watch the just watch the speed indicator up there. I can go up just a little tiny bit. Let's just go up two. And go up, let's say, eight. Let's go up to 20, let's go up to 40, 50, 60, 70, so you can see we can fly upwards 77 we can, or 78, and we can, we can do any iteration in between, we're going to go half, let's go about 35, you can see you got fine control here, oh wow, look at that coming over the horizon, how cool is that, alright, so, alright, I can balance it right down to stop, now, same thing with your lateral thrusters. Um, if you're wanting to land, if you're looking at the train down below, you see there's a nice little spot over there to the left where you can touch down. You can just give her a little bit of leftward thrust. And now what we're doing is we're actually going sideways. It's a little hard to tell, but let's speed it up. You can see I'm definitely going to the left now. And we can slow that down to whatever speed we want. You want to go about 20 to the left? There's a little bit of delay there. So, yep, you can go right about 20 to the left. Or we can just go stop, or we can go the right. So you can see there's you know, very fine, um, very fine control over that lateral and vertical movement now with that, with having those turned on. And unfortunately, they have to be on all the time. Um, but uh, 
soon we'll get the alternate flight mode hopefully and we'll be able to turn that on or off so we'll be able to turn that function that feature on and off when we want to use it or when we don't want to use it maybe some players never want to use it maybe some players want to use it some of the time of course where am i again deep space so i will um I will be logging into tutorial videos um, to do some landings and stations and taking off from stations. But uh, let's go ahead and talk to Astra and um, get her. So I pulled back in the throttle. You can see we're completely stopped. And if I want to go ahead and give Astra a command, we're about one, over a kilometer up. So I think we're safe. All right. So if we want to, we'll just give Astra a command now. And uh, she'll take control of the throttle. Quarter impulse. One quarter impulse. Nice and slow. So we can go whatever speed we want. 80%. Thrusters 80%. Full impulse. Maximum velocity engaged. 50%. Understood. 50%. Reverse 50%. Reversing 50%. So you can see she has total control of the forward and back to thrust vector. And if at any time I want to override it, boom. I just hit my thruster on my, um, or I just hit the throttle, put it up to where I want, and bingo, bingo, boingo, I'm going. Full stop. Stop all thrusters. So, there we go. So you can override the thrusters, you still have the ability to do very fine uh, tune adjustments on there. I can go, you know, I can go to three forward, two forward. See if I can go one up, go one forward, go as fast as you want or as slow as you want. You got it all there. Um, you're going to find that most of the buttons are the same, but not all of them. So you're going to probably want to watch the tutorials. If you want to be a full master of the Elite setup for... Elite Dangerous, you're probably going to want to go ahead and watch the full tutorial videos that I'm going to do. But that was just another demonstration with Astra uh, as to how she controls uh, your throttle optionally or not. So when you're coming in the station, you can go ahead and control it. And I will probably be coming up with a complete Astra video as to what I think all the great commands are, what I think all the great macros are. So if you do have it, you'll have all the functionality inside the game. And of course, if you haven't seen any of these videos before, you know that this works with, um, and now it has Oculus commands, thank the Astra, but it works with Track IR, or which is what I use. I use Track IR. Um, and there's Track IR functions within the control system. There are Oculus functions. And if you don't, if you lack having either uh, Oculus or you know uh, VR or uh, Track IR. There's also a built-in head look within this game too, so that'll all be in there. I'm sure I'll have a video just on uh, head looking within the within the uh, Elite setup, but uh, I hope to see you there in those tutorial videos. So I hope you guys enjoy um, the new setup. I put a lot of time into actually uh, programming this. I've spent a couple of days on my vacation over Christmas and New Year's uh, doing actual programming, doing the investigation, reverse engineering the HCS and getting everything figured out and then of course you know even after everything is programmed all the testing to make sure all the things were working right, testing it again, and testing it again, testing all the features. Um, not to say I couldn't have missed anything, um, you know, that's why I'm also depending on you guys. You guys see anything funky, quirky, something doesn't work right for you, um, something's wrong in the documentation, um, just go ahead and leave me a comment. You know, I do check the comments. I reply to every single comment that's left on there. So um, I appreciate the time and effort you guys do to also make this into a better product. So I'll be seeing you guys definitely when 2.5 comes out for sure and uh, maybe we'll develop some uh, even more powerful Astra commands and we'll improve uh, <laughs> uh, the HCS voice attack pack, come up with a new version. Um, I don't know, we'll see. we got a lot of different things we can do. Um, I appreciate you guys taking the time to watch these videos. Now, um, off to making the tutorial video. And the tutorial video is going to be long. It's probably separated into several videos. Fighter commands video, head look video, push to talk video, or basically communications video. So have a good one. 07 commanders. I'll be seeing you next time. Bye.